Islam, Islamism. Islam, all is well. Islam, praise Allah. Islam, uh, before we started meeting, I wanted uh, to see uh, Lana Cole Bay. She had, we were speaking a little bit early, like about an hour before the meeting. Uh, let me put the speakerphone on. Start. Uh, all right, so you can intro on what we were talking about. Um, Islam. Um, we were just, uh, Islam. Um, we were just having a uh, you know a husband and wife conversation. Um, and we were just talking about um how, you know um, the structure of a family structure and how, you know, you know back in the day. A lot of men were raised to not show emotion and, you know, a lot of women were not nurtured enough by, you know, the males in their household. You know, a lot of us women were brought up to, you know, show a certain type of role and to walk around as if we didn't need, you know, anyone but ourselves and to show this type of dominance in, in the household, you know, and to reflect some type of role or another, you know, and he was, you know, stating as how he saw how fragile, you know, our daughter was and how he, you know, tries his best to, you know, show his presence, you know, around her to let her know that, you know, he always is there, you know, if she needs him. I said, I don't think that enough parents kind of really see that girls kind of do need that as well, you know, in, in, you know, in their life, you know, a lot of black women, you know, in general are kind of just left out there in the world to, you know, portray this strong black woman, you know, role. And it's like, oh, well, they'll be all right. And, you know, they can handle it. And then they're just left to fend for themselves. And there's not enough black male coverage, you know, that backage, you know, and, and you, tend to grow up that way, you know, in, in life. I said, you know, I, I appreciated that, you know, from that male aspect because, you know, I never really kind of heard that when I was growing up, it was like, oh, well, just deal with it. You know, you, you got it handled. You got to figure it out on your own. I said, versus somebody from a male perspective, kind of looking at it from that aspect saying, you know, well, I see how fragile she is. You know, one will never, especially how I grew up, you never wanted to be seen in a fragile light. It kind of made you seem weak. Um, especially growing up in Christianity, you were always seen as a submissive type. And that word kind of seemed dirty and um, you kind of seemed less than. They kind of put you in the back burner, like you weren't strong enough and you didn't really kind of have a say so. I said, so, you know, to we were sitting back just talking about the different roles of men and women and how, you know, I never wanted my son to never, you know, be one of those men who didn't show emotion, you know, to women and the women that he was with and want to be one of these macho men. You know, I said, I, I didn't think that that was good because I said that breeds abuse and violence and negativity. I said, you know, it's not a bad thing to show emotion as a man. I said, I don't think that it makes you a wimp. I just think that makes you a little bit more open-minded to what the, the fairer sex thinks. And it makes you more of a person that can hold a conversation and actually form a relationship and be a family man in that aspect and be an overall rounded person versus this some of these men that you see walking around here that you hear calling women derogatory names because for some apparent reason they were raised in a household where men didn't take women's opinions, you know, at face value. I said, so that was, I think, kind of the um, conversation that we were having. I said, you know, I think, you know, especially in leadership, you know, as far as what he's trying to raise up in, in the Moorish science, I said, I think that would be you know, a good trait to have, you know, as far as trying to be a leadership in the Moorish science um, regime, you know, you have to show that at home because you can't 
show something somewhere else and you can't do it at home. If you're not doing it at home, you can't, you know, depict it out somewhere else too. You know, if you're not being a leader at home, you can't do that somewhere else too. I said, so I think that that's a good trait to have. And this should be a good trait that, you know, anyone that's trying to, you know, be, you know, in the word and, and be of, you know, what they're speaking, you got to kind of walk it like you talk it. If you're going to be out here preaching it and doing it, you have to do it at home as well, too. You have to show it and do it as well. Islam says Islam. That is a hundred percent accurate. I mean, you know, that, that is one of the reasons why we dedicate our time to actually, you know, do this thing the right way. You know, what I'm saying we're not only acting like, you know, we're the more science symbol of America and it's 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 just like church and it's only going down when we gather for our meetings twice a week because that's what a lot of people do and we could see in their lifestyles and their actions that they're not living that they're not living it to the fullest they don't really take it seriously they don't really believe in our salvation this is our salvation and we take our salvation very seriously and we definitely have to start with ourselves at inside of our homes and in our family because our children are the future. They're going to do or respond and act accordingly to how we you know, feed off of our energy for real. Like, however we're conducting ourselves, they're either going to think that it's dope, it's cool, it's beautiful, and they want to follow in our footsteps, or they're going to, you know, because sometimes you see how people are acting outside and then their family don't deal with them don't like them, don't yep. support them. That means they're not doing it at home. Yep. That is right there, the biggest, the biggest indication that they false, they phony, and they fake. Because if they can't bring their people in that's right up under them, their kids, they not it. Islam? Yes, Islam. I agree 100%. Mm -hmm. Islam, on, on the male side, being a father of a daughter and a son, it's critical that that daughter sees a positive role model of the male in the household at a very young age. You know, And if that's not, as the sister said, nurturing but strong, there's a critical balance you got to have with uh, the female, I think. With my son... Uh, there's a balance too, but especially with my my daughter that I see uh, her now at 31, and I remember her at four, and she had a strong personality, and she was watching everything that I did and said, and uh, that's critical. And if you don't have the role model from your father, it's very difficult to find that that sweet spot. But um, you know, not all of us find you know, the prophet at the same time, but uh, just living like a man should be. And that's another definition. Uh, there's a lot of so-called men that are over 18, but they're acting like boys. And that's the problem that I see uh, with, uh, as the sister said, uh, not respecting and calling uh, the queen, the queen that she is and using all kinds of derogatory terms when when that's not uh appropriate because without the queen there is no man awesome that's pretty much what i wanted to add islam islam and that is 100 percent facts as well because it's a balance you can't they, you can't have a queen without a king and vice versa and it takes a village to raise the children and it starts at home. Education starts at home. Whatever you're feeding them is what they're going into the world with. And if you're not arming them, and if we're not arming them with truth and love and you know understanding and patience and our five principles, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, you know, you're setting them up for failure. And so many of us have been set up for failure. And that's why, you know, once we get the hold of this information, we we hit the ground running. We want it. 
we want to make it happen. We want to see it happen because, you know, here we were thinking that we were nothing but the sentence of slavery and, you know, the bottom, the undesirable. And, and then we find out that we're the greatest people on the planet. Oh, like, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for mine because uh, they told me I ain't have none. And then I find out I got all the chips. <laughs> Well said, Islam. Islam. So yes, I want to say thank you, Honors, to my sister for bringing that up because that right there is key to success, the key to making all this happen. We need our fathers to be fathers, great men, leaders, and to be true to who they to who they are, so that they can be true to their children, so that they can bring them up in the proper way. And we need our mothers to do the same. We can't be caught up in, you know, all the stuff that's going around, trying to be trendy, trying, you know. I, I know sisters that I never seen their real face before. I never seen them without their eyelashes and eyebrows and face full of makeup and weave. I don't know what these sisters look like. And it's like, I've been knowing them for years, never seen their true self. Who are they hiding from? <laughs> you know, what are they hiding from? It's like, this is the artificial intelligence. It is, it's, it's coming into our reality. You know, I can't take these people serious. I can't say, hey, you know, you want to learn about who you really are, more science. They don't want to hear that because they, they don't like who they are. And I can see it just by looking at them because I can't see their faces. And when they look in the mirror, they obviously believe that the, the makeup and, and the disguise, I call it a disguise, is what makes them beautiful and attractive. And they're not going to listen to anyone about being natural and true to yourself and just being who you are. So it's... It's, it's work. We got some work to do more because, <laughs> because, you know, they're, like I said, they're following the trends and, you know, they're, they're falling into the traps. So we, we definitely have to be ourselves and be the best selves we can be. And that's why we hear Islam. Islam. Yeah, Islam. <laughs> Islam Morris, thank you all for coming. We're about to go ahead and open up. All meetings are to be opened and closed promptly according to the Circle 7 in love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. All rise and face the east for the Moorish American prayer. Allah. Allah. Father of the universe. Father of the universe. Father of the universe. Father of love. Father of, Father of love. Father of love. Truth. 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 Peace. 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 Freedom. 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 And justice. And justice. And justice. Allah is my protector. Allah is my protector. My guide. My guide. My guide. And my salvation. And my salvation. By night and by day. By night and by day. Through his holy prophet. Through his holy prophet. Through Ali. Through Ali. Amen. Amen. Islam. Islam. All right, I want to announce that the meeting is now open. First and foremost, we rise and give the highest praise to the Most High, our Father God, Allah. We give honors to our divine prophet, Noble Drew Ali, for returning our divine creed and nationality to us so that we may learn to love instead of hate. We give honors to the forerunner to the prophet, our brother Marcus Mosiah Garvey, for preparing the way for Noble Drew Ali, and honors to all the Adab Sheikhs and all the faithful Moors that make up the grand body of the Moorish Divine and National Movement. We give honors to the first appointed Supreme Grand Sheikh by our prophet, Brother E. Millie Ill, and honors to the current Supreme Grand Sheikh, Brother K. Dandrejo. We also give honors to the Grand Council of the Moorish Science Temple of America, and honors to all the faithful on the call, Islam, Islam. 
Islam. Yes. All right, can um, Sister William Zell, can you read the divine constitution and bylaws, please? <laughs> Islam, brother, I'm actually in the car. All right, Islam, that's fine. Let's see. Right, brother. Right. I'm sorry, was somebody about to speak? Right, brother Thomas Bay, would you please read the divine constitution? unity the more science temple of america the divine constitution and bylaws act one the grand sheik and the chairman of the more science temple of america is empowered to make law and enforce law with the assistance of the prophet and the grand body of the more science temple of america the assistant grand sheik is to assist the grand sheik in all affairs if he lives according to love truth peace freedom and justice and it is known before the members of the more science temple of america act two all meetings are to be open and closed promptly according to the circle seven and love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Friday is our holy day of rest because on a Friday, the first man was formed in flesh and on a Friday, the first man departed out of flesh and ascended unto his father, God, Allah. For that cause, Friday is the holy day for all Muslims all over the world. Act three, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice must be proclaimed and practiced by all members of the Morse Science Temple of America. No member is to put in danger or accuse falsely his brother or sister on any occasion at all that may harm his brother or sister because Allah is love. Act four, all members must preserve these holy and divine laws and all members must obey the law of the government because by being a Morse American, you are a part and partial of the government and must live the life accordingly. Act five, this organization of the Morris Science Temple of America is not to cause any confusion or to overthrow the law of the constitution of the said government, but to obey hereby. Act six, with us, all members must proclaim their nationality and we are teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed that they may know that they are a part and partial of this said government and know that they are not Negroes colored folks, black people, or Ethiopians, because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now, and all men now must proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained noble Jew Ali, the prophet, to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Act seven, all members must promptly attend their meetings and become a part and partial of all uplifted acts of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Members must pay their dues and keep in line with all necessities of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Then you are entitled to the name of faithful. Husband, you must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duties of your household. Sons and daughters must obey father and mother and be industrious and become a part of the uplifting of fallen humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. This divine covenant is from your holy prophet, Noble Drew Ali, through the guidance of his father, God Allah. Noble Drew Ali, founder, Morsh American Prayer, Allah, the father of the universe, the father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation. 
by night and by day through his holy prophet, Drew Ali. Amen. The Morris Science Temple of America, home office of Noble Drew Ali, home office Chicago, Illinois, U.S.A. Islam, Islam, Islamism. 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 <clears throat> All right, Islamism. Um, I do want to give um, recognition for today, um, actually, October 17th should be recognized as our Independence Day. Um, just going to share this old post from last year and read this out loud for those that can't see it. <clears throat> Islamism, it was when the uh, October 17th it was when the very first Moorish American Prophet Noble Drew Ali recognized in law on the date of October 17th, 1928, the third meeting day of our first annual and national convention that our divine prophet draped an American flag around a little boy and a Moorish flag around a little girl and announced to the members of the Moorish Science Temple of America, I have now made you a nation within a nation. And with the parade, our nationality began in this movement. Being at the parade was more than just a show. It was a formal declaration putting the government and citizens of America on notice that the Moors had risen again in this hemisphere. It was a formal declaration of our nationhood and independence. And that was um, on October 17, 1928. Islam. Okay, and- um, Islam. Islam. Brother Cole Bay, hang on a second. Brother Cole Bay, would you please read the writs? Islam, I rise and give high honors to the great God Allah. I rise and give high honors to our prophet Noah to our Lord. I rise and give honors to all Moors on attendance and all Moors in the planet. To be proclaimed at every meeting, Islam, I'm glad to know I have a few faithful Moors among you all and I desire for them to know the truth and the divine truth. There is a host of jealousy about me and the movement now by the same people of our side of the nation they claimed that I was a joke and unreal. But now since they found out from the government officials and the nations of the earth, this is the only sole foundation that all Asiatics must depend upon for their earthly salvation as American citizens. They are working every scheme that they can to disqualify me so they may take charge of the situation. I have notified all these things to you long ago in the past. It is through the faithful Moors that attribute to the movement and other than funds the ones that pay their divine respect to me and the movement will be remembered. That is why I'm calling upon all faithful Moors to increase their faithfulness to me, your prophet, and your divine Moors movement. I need finance and I need it badly. Never before have I needed finance so badly as I do at present so I may shove aside the discord that is facing the nation. It all comes through the jealousy because of my fame and nobility. The nations of the world will not recognize the movement without I, the prophet, being head. It has been proven by my works, which I have performed in the past few years. Prophet, Noble Jwali. To the members of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Islam, this is instructions from your prophet, Noble Jwali. Be faithful unto your forefather divine and national creed that you will be blessed for your good works that you sow in the flesh. Allah is the one that judges the world and his judgment is on now, but the weak can comprehend it not. The end of the time, the end, the end time is drawing near, so says Allah to his divine prophet, I know Buju Ali. And that is why many hearts have turned to stone. Many have eyes to see, but cannot see, ears to hear, but cannot hear. At least they will be confined of their sins. These are the trying hours now, dear Moors. And every evil spirit is moving, and they are trying every weak mind to overthrow and drag out the true foundation that has been laid and to cause confusion in the minds of the ones that do believe. But if you have the true love of Allah and the spirit of your forefathers, you fear not what you hear or see, but will sacrifice the utmost of your very life to protect your movement and your prophet. Watch your enemies, dear Morris. Your enemies are the ones that speak against your prophet and ridicule him to the very lowest, and the ones that speak against your divine and national principles of your temple. Act accordingly, and Allah will bless you for your good work. Peace, your divine prophet. Noble Juali. 
Prophet warns all Muslims to be read in every meeting. I hereby inform all members they must end all radical speeches while at work, in their homes, and on the streets. We are for peace and not destruction. Stop flashing the cards of the Europeans. It causes confusion. Remember, your card is for your salvation. Fairy to obey these orders will be a severe consequence. We are for love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And when these principles are violated, justice must then take its course. Any member or group of members who hold malicious feelings towards the temple or the prophet or violate the divine covenant of the Moorish movement will receive their reward from Allah for their unjust deeds. All true Moors will and must obey the law laid down to them by their prophet. If they lose confidence in their prophet, they should turn in the card and button, cease wearing the turban and fez, and return to the state where I, the prophet, found you. This is a holy and divine movement founded by the prophet Noble Jew Ali. And the prophet is not right, the temple is not right. The prophet, therefore, is sending out the divine plea to all Moorish Americans. They do their part in protecting the prophet and the temple. This is an everlasting movement founded by the prophet through the will of Allah to redeem his people from their sinful ways. Peace, Noble Jew Ali. Islam, Islam, Islamism wars. All right, Islamism. Thank you, brother. Thank you for reading that. And uh, before we get started, we're going to read from the additional laws. Right. Okay, quick. Excuse me, questionnaire and additional laws for the Moorish Americans by the Prophet Noble Drew Ali, Act 1. Grand sheiks and governors and heads of all temples, all businesses, each said temple must be approved by the Prophet Noble Drew Ali before acting upon by any members, let it be finance, property, or any line of life that will cause the members to sacrifice, finance, etc. That will, ETC that will cause the support of any group of members. Any former officer that violates these laws is subject to be removed from his office under a heavy restriction, ETC, by the prophet or the grand sheik. Act two, all members are to attend their ADAP meetings and their public meetings promptly. If a member is found standing around on their meeting period, shall be fined 50 cents on the first case and on the second, he will be fined $1, which will go on your emergency fund. If members working, his monthly dues must be paid. And if he has money in the bank, he must subscribe for as much as he is able to the Moorish Uplifting Fund because it takes finance to uplift the nation. Act three, it is lawful, the lawful and divine duty of every good member if he's able in finance to aid me in saving the nation. And if he does not, he is an enemy to the cause of uplifting his own people. And justice must catch you. Let it be he or she according to love Truth, peace, freedom, and justice is I have the power invested in my hands and I will have to enforce the law in order to save the nation. All members while up making a public speech must not use any assertion against the American flag or speak radical against the church or any member of any organized group because we are to teach love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. <clears throat> Act five, all members must promptly attend their meetings and send their children to Sunday school and the teacher must confirm himself to the questionnaire and let every member exercise his five senses who is able to do so because out from your Sunday school comes the guiders of the nation. Act six, with us, all members must proclaim their nationality and we are teaching our people their nationality so that they may know that they are part and parcel of this said government and know that they are not Negroes, colored folks, black people or Ethiopians because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now and all men now must proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live in the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe ordained noble Drew Ali the prophet to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Act six, all members must promptly attend their meetings and become a part and parcel of all uplifting acts of the Moorish Science Temple. Members must pay their dues and keep in line with all necessities of the Moorish Science Temple. Then you are entitled to the name of faithful. 
Husband, you must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duties of your household. Sons and daughters must obey father and mother and be industrious and become part of the uplifting of fallen humanity. Got the whole family involved. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. This divine covenant is from your holy prophet, noble Drew Ali, through the guidance of his father, God Allah. Islam, Islam, Islamism. See, the whole family has to be involved in order to activate that divine covenant. Um, brother, brother Lawson now, would you please Islam. just read through questions 41 through 50 and then we'll discuss them. Islam, Islam, Sheikh. I rise and give honor to the Most High Father God, Allah, the Prophet Noble Drew Ali, the more is on the call, the more is not on the call, the Supreme Grand Sheikh, uh, Kate Janderdale, Islam, Islam, Islamism. Um, number 40, what is our Prophet to us? He is the angel of Allah who set, who is sent to bring us the everlasting gospel of Allah. 42, what is the everlasting gospel? It is a saving power that comes from Allah through the ancient father by his prophet. 43, what is the covenant of the great God Allah? Honor thy father and thy mother that their days may be long upon earthland which the Lord thy God Allah has given thee. 43. What is the age, what, at what age did Jesus begin to teach? At the age of 12. 44. Where did he teach? India, Africa, and Europe. 45. How long did he teach? 18 years. 46. What did Jesus say that would make you free? The truth. 47. The truth is, what is the truth? Truth is art. 48, what is art? Art is Allah. 49, can the truth change? Truth cannot change or pass away. 50, what other names do we give to truth? Holy breath, Islam. All right, Islam. Thank you, brother. Okay. Um, before we talk about this, I wanted to, to read something from our Moorish literature. We're gonna, real quickly, we're gonna read Drew Ali in time. Okay, this is a short passage. Drew Ali in time, Allah has sent us a prophet and sent him in time with the holy message, which is divine. Now remember, um, Looking in your, your Quran, if you, you have it in front of you, everybody should have it somewhere. <laughs> when you look at the Quran, each page says the divine instructions on, on the left and then on the right says from the Holy Prophet. All right, so when you opened it up, you know, they all say the divine instructions from the Holy Prophet all throughout the Quran. All right, so this is the holy message, which is divine. The entire Quran has our laws, divine instructions, all of, all throughout it, divine instructions. Okay, so we sent them right in time. This is this is this is the end time message for us. And he came to let the Asiatics of America know they are of the ancient family of the Moors. And of course, he had he did this because we we were disconnected from it, right? The European created a label to be at the bottom of his caste system. And we were coerced and tricked into to going into that. And regardless of how smart our people were, nobody knew this. Nobody had a solution except for Prophet Noble Drew Ali. So he came with the divine message, divine instructions to let us know, reconnect us to our ancient family and also to get us into that mindset of our ancient family so that we can fix our own problems, right? And to change our ways, how we conducted ourselves. Because even back then, 
we were, you know, starting to be more savage. We weren't acting like nobles. So his his speech was to the Asiatic first, right? So when our message is to uplift fallen humanity, obviously that is a worldwide message. It's not even it's not even just limited to us. Eventually, we're to be the leaders. But first, we, we can't help anybody if we don't fix ourselves. So his speech was to the Asiatic first. Because why? Because they have been sinners since their departure from their forefathers' religion. Anybody know what our forefathers' religion was? Islamism. Islam. That's right. Islamism. Oh, sinners, why don't you hear the soul of Islam ringing in your ears? The prophet has said that if I were you, I would get ready before you are made to do so. Now, why would he say something like that? I would get ready before you are made to do so. You know, right now, there's things that are going on that should let everybody know they can't depend upon Europeans anymore. And not knocking Europeans, it's no knock. It's just, it's common sense at this point in time. A lot of places you can't even get change, right? You can't get coins. Mm -hmm. What's going on with that? Islam. What's really going on with that? Come on. That should make a lot of people wake up. Come on. Something's mm -hmm. going on. Why can't you get change back? It's not a game. So the prophet said this message and it's almost 100 years old now, but it's right on time. We just happen to be coming into this knowledge right now. Look, um, 20 years ago, it would have been difficult to get this many people together. And especially for all of you who've been doing this relentlessly, you're here every Friday and Sunday studying on a Friday when you could be out, and especially this summer, you could have been out on the streets, you could have been doing all types of stuff. You could have been getting high, could have been getting drunk, you could have been doing whatever. You here studying the Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple of America you, with your brothers and sisters. That's special. And like I said, it would have been difficult to get this popping 20 years ago and then 40 years ago, right? 80s, 70s would have been even more difficult. We are right on time. You are right on time. And this message is right on time. It was marinating for this point in time, right now, doesn't matter how old or young you are, you're at the age you are supposed to be at right now so that you can assist. You're ready right now because this is the time. And so the prophet said, um, if I were you, I would get ready before you're made to do so. Now, you probably don't need to hear this from me because you already know something is going on. I mean, all of the, the fires, Hurricane Katrina, all of these things are end time events. The stuff going on with Donald Trump, it's ridiculous. Okay, and now, yeah, the, the, the whole thing with the change, like there's something is about to happen, okay? And the prophet let us know we need to get ready before we are made to do so because if you're at the point where you're not paying attention and getting ready now, building up our own sustainable community to withstand whatever is about to come down, we don't want to be made to do so. We can't afford to slow foot and wait. All right? We can't. We have to be ahead of the game. All right, so moving on. Now come and pick up your forefathers and mothers ancient and divine creed, which carries your national name indeed. This all ties in uh, questions 40 through 50. It will entitle you to your rights, which you have been denied. Because in 1774, your light was cut off from the ancient Moors. And that is why Allah has sent us a prophet in 1886 to prepare the light that was out. In 1925, the prophet said, I have mended the broken wires and have connected them with the higher powers. So come on, Asiatics, don't you want to go? We were marching on to Canaan. I used to think it was a city in the sky, but now I know it is here on earth. Don't you want your share? So the prophet said, 
we need to pick up our forefathers and foremothers ancient and divine creed, Islamism, which carries our national name indeed. And it will entitle you to your rights, which have been denied. Okay, and so that goes right into um, questions 40 through 50. Let's pull this back up. What is the everlasting gospel? It's the saving power that comes um, from Allah through our ancient father by his prophet. All right. So the prophet is, is returning our divine creed to us, the everlasting gospel, right? The gospel, the good news. Okay. And this is where your saving power is. This is where your salvation truly is. It's not in following the document. It's actually in returning to your divine creed and in doing so moving out of the sin and disobedience, which has torn you away from, from Allah, which has put us in this undesirable position where we're literally undesirables. We're at the bottom of the caste system in our own homeland. Um, who said this? Who, who said we're like exiles in our own homeland? Was it, was it Martin Luther King? I'm sorry, I, I can't even remember who, somebody said that. Peace. It was Dr. Martin Luther King. Okay, so we're literally undesirables in this situation. And for us to still in 2020, to be out here marching saying Black Lives Matters and Black Lives Matters, that whole slogan and movement has spread all over the world. So everyone knows about the hypocrisy. So them being aware of it doesn't do anything about stopping the actual suffering that we're going through, right? Because people will say, well, we need to spread awareness. We've been spreading awareness. It's, it's not gonna work. We can't force this on a civilized world, we can't, right? Because as long as we're going by this, we're, we're still participating in the sin that is keeping us in this position, all right? So um, with the prophet's role was twofold. Part of his duty was to save us from the wrath, the divine chastisement of Allah. And he did that by bringing us back in accordance with Allah's law. Right. So we have to return to Islamism. It's important. We have to return to to our divine creed. We can't push this forward with these old activities, old way of thinking, old, you know, the old thought process is keeping us down. It affects us in every aspect, which is goes into question 41. What is the everlasting gospel? It is the saving power that comes from a lot through our ancient for our ancient fathers bias prophet all right so the saving power you know the everlasting gospel that's what saves us from from mu much of the troubles that we find ourselves in like for on one instance you have little traps that are set up for us like for instance um when you look at the 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 way that people are being prosecuted for crimes, whether they're petty or major, we're getting heavier sentences. But obviously, if we're returning to Islam, that's going to keep us out of that situation for the most part, right? Because you're not going to have the problems with drugs. You're not selling drugs. You're not doing drugs. You're not going to be in those types of situations, right? Just by returning to, to our divine creed. That re so the traps, a lot of the traps that they have set up for us are taking advantage of us being in a savage position, having that mindset. But by returning to the divine creed, that's keeping us away from, from drug addiction and, and, and self-hatred, greed, selfishness, all of these things that are plaguing us and keeping us at the bottom. And um, the crazy part of this is though, as much as despised as we are, we're still the leaders of the world. As the prophet said, the keys to civilization were and are in the hands of the Asiatics right here, specifically us, so-called African-Americans. 
So even in our lowered state, right? Said this before, but even with us sagging our pants and, and doing embarrassing, ignorant things, we're still influencing people all over the world. And if the keys to civilization are in our hands and we're at the bottom, that means the entire world is affected by this, right? Okay. And so that's where the everlasting, that's the everlasting gospel. That's where our saving power is. We have to return to our ways. And that's why, of course, this is why we meet and study and, and, and um, do this together as a unit so that we can help to build each other up. Is, you know, I want to see you be successful. Hopefully you want to see me be successful. We want to reach our potential as a unit, as a nation, all right? And um, let's move on to question 43. What is the covenant? Oh, no, 40, 42. Okay, 42. What is the covenant? of the great God Allah. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the earth land which the Lord God hath given thee. Okay, and so um, we've talked about this before too in the Quran, we're given the covenants which for the most part are defining our character and how we conduct ourselves and by honoring these things, these principles, these divine and principles, which are actually divine instructions, we will be successful. And this is, this is taking care of actually, this is twofold. This is taking care of your spiritual needs as well as your, your earthly needs. For the most part, following these instructions, they, control our conduct as far as how we're creating families out here, relations, um, male and females, you know, husband and wife, how we're rearing families. By honoring these covenants, these divine covenants, we will, success is guaranteed. It's guaranteed. I'm not really going to go into all of the things that happen right now if you don't honor these divine covenant the divine covenant but just one example obviously if say i have like three different baby mamas and like this chances are my life is going to be hell okay and it's something that i created for myself and then they, they just happen to have traps set up for you where you know now i'm paying child support and all of these different situations are going on it's just you know, it's avoidable. It's avoidable. And um, it's actually not that complicated on how to how to um, be successful and prosper. And so um, once again, this is why we study and we hold true to this. It's truly divine. By honoring this, this and, and abiding to this, we are locked into a covenant which guarantees your success. Plain and simple. Um, one more thing I want to say, though, if anybody has anything they want to add, feel free to uh, to speak up. Now, going to question 43. At what age did Jesus begin to teach? Um, Jesus began teaching at the age of 12. OK, and so. When you had you had two parents who were basically consecrated to the service of God and they kept themselves pure in the hopes that they would, they would um, bring forth the long promised Messiah. So Jesus was pure of soul. And um, this is why they're saying that his birth was immaculate. One meaning for immaculate is clean. Let me see if we can get another definition 1828 dictionary definition on immaculate but one definition would be clean right spotless pure okay um and on, on the of course at the age of 12 he was already seen as a master he's already holding court with with the doctors of law and 
Um, <clears throat> he was reared and educated by the Egyptian masters. Whether it was directly receiving uh, education from Elihu and Salam or through his mother, who was also educated by, by the Egyptian masters. So um, for the most part, he was pure, excuse that, pure and free of the negative impressions of sin. Okay, and he was already teaching, teaching um, masters at the age of 12, but 12 is also significant. We, we've talked about that before. There's, there's a lot of um, symbolism with 12. We could go on and on about that forever. You, you have the 12 zodiac signs. The clock has 12 hours on it. Um, we have the 12 step ladder, right? The, the, the 12 virtues. So the number 12 represents the 12 lessons of human experience. And that's the 12 qualities to be developed in the formation of perfected man. So when you have the, the 12 step ladder, the climbing the 12 step ladder, you have those 12 virtues. And with each virtue um, that you master, you're that much closer to mastering your lower self. And in order to master each virtue, you have three steps. You have um, belief, faith, and fruition. Right? And so this is why it would be the 12, the 12 qualities that you develop or that you attain in order to form or bring out perfected man to have mastery over lower self. So the number 12 has a cosmic um, symbolism in it. And then, like I said, they had 12 signs of the Zodiac. Jesus had the 12 disciples, 12 sons of Jacob. That's the 12 tribes of Israel. You also have 12 entrances or the 12 portals that you have to pass through in the Great Pyramid. Okay. Um, question 44 is uh, where did he teach? And this is where we're, we're given secret lessons or lessons that were kept back from the general public on um, Jesus teaching in India, Africa, and Europe because um, coming from a biblical perspective, it's just confined to the, Pal the region in Palestine, right? What we understand, we know that Jesus actually taught to the, the Greeks. He, he, went to, he went to Europe, he taught throughout India, and of course he was in Africa. And these keys or these lessons were being held back until it was time for man to enter into new age. You know, the, this um, information was coming out around the turn of the century, the early 1900s. And there just happened to be a convergence happening at that time where you have um, the whole planet or humankind, humans or whatever, going through a change to the age of Aquarius. And um, there's stories that uh, what's his name? Uh, Rudolf Hess, who was a, a German Nazi, who was actually, he, he grew up in Egypt. He was in Egypt around this time. You had um, an occultist, I think from England, who was uh, Alistair Crowley. He was also in Egypt at this time. And then the prophet noble Drew Ali. And all three of these people had profound spiritual experiences, which led to them publishing literature and bringing it to their people. Okay, so a lot of people don't know that. And this all happened around the same time. So this information about Jesus being in India, Africa, and Europe, all of these secret lessons, they were being put out at the right time when it was time. And that's why I also was saying earlier, we are right on time. Everything's happening like it's supposed to. We have a question, Islam, I yield the floor. Um. 
Islam. Um, first and foremost, I rise and give perfect praise to Allah, Father of the Universe. Honors to His Prophet Noble Drali. Honors to all the clean and faithful Moors in attendance. Um, I just wanted to add, since we were talking about the 12, um, the year 2012 was important to us. That was when the Mayan calendar ended and we had a, a great awakening on the planet. And um, if we look in the Bible at Exodus 2012, it reminds us of the Holy Covenant to honor mother and father. Islam, I yield the floor. Islam, all right, thank you for sharing. Islam, so moving on to question 45, how long did he teach? 18 years, all right? And this is significant too, because in the, in the of well, once again, from a biblical perspective, we just, we get the infant Jesus, then just fast forward to him being 12 years old, where he's disputing with the doctors of law. And then it, it goes again, it skips forward to him being 30 years old. And that's when his divine ministry began. But through our lessons, where we're getting that missing 18 years, we're getting a more complete picture. We're getting profound truths that it, um, we're getting a blueprint also of his life of how to steps to walk in on how to to reveal a lot of man or spirit man within us. Okay, and that's giving us um, a closer view of our connection to this story, how, how it pertains to each and every one of us. So understanding his, his mission and um, getting a, a deeper understanding of, of uh, the connection of Allah and man, this is, you know, more empowering, right? So these lessons were held back. You know, I can't really speak on why they were held back. You can just um, infer from what, what we're seeing that there's power in this knowledge and wisdom. And so it was released when the time was right. But um, those 18 years, you know, they give, they give a more well-rounded view of the message that Jesus was. And here we know that Jesus is saying that all of us, right? All of us, each and every last one of us has these abilities. Um, all right, so moving on to question 46. What did Jesus say that will make you free? And the answer is truth. All right, so to be free, that's um, one way of looking at that is um, being in a state where you're not determined by by um, anything that's beyond your own nature. To have the power to act as your own true nature. And you can't do that unless you live in truth. That's my. All right. And um, let's see, in the in the gospel, Jesus reportedly said, know the truth and the truth will set you free. And he was saying this during one of the dark periods in his people's history, where there was uh, they were under the Roman yoke. His native Palestine was being occupied by foreigners and his people were being subjugated. And so the freedom that he was speaking of was mental and spiritual freedom. And if you have this, that's gonna result in your external freedom. All right, so the truth is revolutionary because it goes to the root of things. All right, and also um, it's impossible, you know, for you to remain subjugated to know who you truly are, to, to return to the true way, your true way of being. And that's definitely the case with us as a people, which is why um, for the most part, the message that we get is about personal transformation. All right. And um, ultimately the ultimate truth, which is of course, that's in the, the first chapter of the Holy Quran with the creation and fall of man we understand that man is a thought of Allah and all thoughts of Allah are infinite. They're not measured up by time for the things that are concerned with time, beginning and end. 
the everlasting of the past unto the never ending days will come. And so is man, the spirit man. So in there, we know that we are spirit man, that Allah is within us, that we have power. And that's your ultimate truth. So to return to that, you cannot remain subjugated. Nothing, no power on earth, no humans, no, nothing can hold you down. And um, that's one of the messages that a lot of people won't get. You know, if you're coming at them as a more scientist or whatever, you, you, an ADEP, whatever you want to call it, where you're coming and you're telling them it's about personal transformation. This is where your power truly is. Somebody, for example, who's thinking that they need to be revolutionary. We need to get guns. Like there, there was a brother <laughs> who I'm, I'm not going to name anybody. There was a brother who's posting pictures with him and his friends, I guess, all with their guns. And everybody's posting with guns, taking selfies. And, and somebody like that, they may think, well, this is what we need to do to get free. And you're saying, hey, it's about, it's about fixing yourself realizing who you truly are they're not trying to hear that message right but in reality if you realize your true connection to the infinite the power that's within you nothing can subjugate you nothing can hold you back and that's why truth is liberating you it's freeing you all right and there's no need for us all to get together and take selfies with guns you know <laughs> okay so uh moving on to question 47 what is truth truth is art let's see let's let's get the definition on art because that's a word that we don't really use art 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 is hang on anything indefinitely any part, the smallest, a jot, or a title. Right. So the word, the like, what I'm getting from this is art it means anything or everything. Art encompasses the whole. It's the whole of reality. It's the causeless cause, the rootless root. So truth is art. What is art? Art is a lie. All right, so that the prophet is teaching us that a lie, truth, and art are synonymous. They're all one. Art is absolute righteousness and supreme intelligence. And that's the ultimate condition of all things. And uh, 49, can truth change? Truth cannot change or pass away. Since truth is art and art is a lie, truth cannot change or pass away. Um, a lie is the same in the past, present, and the future. And truth is the only thing that changes not. In all the world, there are two things. The one is truth, the other is falsehood, and falsehood is that which seems to be. Now truth is art and has no cause, and yet it is the cause of everything. So the truth, which was acknowledged by Jesus over 2000 years ago and reiterated by Prophet Noble Drew Ali in our modern times was acknowledged by all the prophets since time immemorial. And so it does not change. And this is why the prophet can give us the lessons or the, the blueprint on how to how to unfold a lie in man by showing the steps that Jesus walked because truth doesn't change. We follow those steps and it will work for us as well. All right, and truth never changes. All right, and also, um, well, the United States in, in 1975, 76, celebrated its bicentennial, right? Um, most of the nations in the world today, they're not very old. Some of them are younger than that, young, way younger than 200 years. But that's, that's not a lot of time. Okay, but our ancient civilizations lasted for thousands of years. Thousands of years. Like I've seen some scrolls from Egypt where 
the Egyptians were talking about their civilization going back tens of thousands of years. And they're just describing their own history, right? So our ancient civilizations were able to last for thousands of years because they're modeled on the principles of truth and truth does not change. The reason they would have faltered after time would be because they went away from that. After thousands of years, they got away from it and they self-destructed. All right, and so this is what the prophet's returning us to because if we're modeling our marriage on this, our family, our, our community, if these things are modeled on the principles of truth, they'll last longer and they'll be beautiful forever because truth does not change. It's, truth is ought and it's the only thing that does not change. It'll be long lasting. And that's how our communities can thrive. So as we wrap this up, this, this is why we are returning to these principles and the divine instructions. Remember that, look in your Quran. Every page has divine instructions from the prophet. It's up there at the top for a reason. So you don't forget everything in here. These are all divine instructions, divine meaning of or from God. 50, what other name do we give to truth? Holy breath. Okay, um, if we go to chapter 37 of the Moorish Holy Quran. Hang on. <laughs> All right, chapter 37, holy instructions from the prophet, the breath of heaven. All right, in this chapter, the prophet says, as the breath of heaven saith unto the waters of the deep, this way shall thy billows roll and no other. Thus high and no higher shall they raise their fury. So let thy spirit, O oh man, actuate and direct thy flesh. So when you look at that, you can see that in this context, the way that it's used, breath means spirit and heaven means God. So the phrase breath of heaven means the spirit of God. The breath of heaven says unto the waters of the deep. The spirit of God, because it's also saying, so let thy spirit, O man, actuate and direct thy flesh. The spirit of God is what's in us, spirit of Allah. All right, so that's that's just um, reiterating it, the, the breath of heaven, what it's talking about in here, the holy breath, that's the spirit of God. All right. Um, so just... Just wanted to give that or share that uh, view on this. Um, if anybody has any questions or anything that they wanted to add, feel free to speak up. Islam, I just wanted to say, even on the holy breath, uh, just camelbacking on that. Uh, like, if you look at, like, just say the world, the only two things on the planet they can talk is a parrot that is taught a parrot family that is taught and human we don't think they can speak which means like more more of the god manifesting in the flesh as a more that you can kind of see that in just looking at it as an example like a bird we can teach a certain type of bird to talk they can mimic us but we are the only ones that can speak and to speak means to bring something into existence. No other animal can do that but us. Islam. 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 And that's that's powerful. <laughs> that's truly powerful. So, yeah, you know, um, that just also hits on our, our station and things like um, we often share from the Holy Quran um, where it says in Surah 2, Ayah 30, that Allah created us to be his vice regent on earth. All right? And then we know that that vice regent, that's the earthly representative of God. So we were given the power to create, to, to create our reality physically. Of course, we can, we, can, we can make it so that, you know, whereas animals may not be able to leave their climates and survive, we can go survive anywhere. We can even build things, we can live underwater. But also 
we can create our reality, excuse me, reality, literally. As we speak, as we say, even though we, we may not think we're that powerful, we alter everything around us with our thoughts and with our words, our speech. So Islam, thank you, brother, for sharing that. Islam, no power, just uh, no problem. Just like with the, the mantra, if you really do the mantra and see things in existence, do the mantra and then look at what happened two or three days before and see how things happen for you, you speak things into existence. Islam, thank you for sharing that mantra to me, brother. Islam. Islam, does anybody else have any questions or anything uh, they wanted to add about the, the questionnaire? Islam, uh, I rise and give high praises to Allah, honors to uh, the Prophet, honors to you more as an attendant. Uh, what I got from this is, you know, to walk in the light uh, is is to be like Jesus. So as, you know, you, you could be your, your, this is, this is the message to all human beings, you know, to be your own Jesus. Islam. 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 Thank you, brother. And that's, man, you, you got it. Basically, you got it. Um, see, uh, anyone else have any questions or anything they wanted to add? All right. Um, for the sister Shalia, did, did we get your information? Yes. All right. Did you have any questions? Um, no, I don't. I'm just in, enjoying the talk. All right. Islam. Okay. So let's see. We're, we're about to go ahead and wrap things up. Um, I do want to thank everybody for, for joining us. Um, Let's see, brother Thomas, Thomas Bay. Hang on. Oh, okay. There you are. Will you please read the divine warning? Islam, first I rise, giving the highest praise to our Father God Allah, and give praise to our um our Prophet, um and all the Moors in attendance today on this call. Nations. The citizens of all free national governments, according to their national constitutions, are all one family bearing one free national name. Those who fail to recognize the free national name of their constitutional government are classified as undesirables and are subject to all inferior names, abuses, and mistreatments that the citizens care to bestow upon them. And it is a sin for any group of people to violate the national constitutional laws of the free national government and cling to names and principles that delude to slavery. I the prophet was prepared by the great God Allah to warn my people to repent from their sinful ways and go back to the state and mind of their forefathers, divine and national principles, that they will be law abiders and receive their divine rights as citizens, according to free national constitution that was prepared for all free national beings they are to claim their own free national name and religion. There is but one issue for them to be recognized by this government and the earth, and it comes only through the connection to the Moorish Divine National Movement, which is incorporated in this government and recognized by all other nations of the world. And through it, they and their children can receive their divine rights unmolested by other citizens that they can cast a free national ballot at the polls under a free national constitution of their state's government and not under granted privilege as has been the existing conditions for many generations. 
you who doubt whether I, the prophet, and my principles are right for the redemption of my people, go to those who know law in city hall and among the officials in your government and ask them under an intelligent tone, and they will be glad to render you a flavorable reply. For they are glad to see me bring you out of darkness into the light. Money does not make the man. It is a free national standards and power that makes a man and a nation. The wealth of all national governments, gold and silver and commerce, belongs to the citizens alone. And without your national citizenship, by name and principles, you have no true wealth. And I am hereby calling all true citizens that stand for a free national government and the enforcement of the Constitution to help me in my great missionary work because I need all support from all American citizens of the United States of America. Help me save my people who have fallen from the constitutional laws of their government. I am dependent on your support to get them back into the constitutional fold again, and they will learn to love instead of hate and live according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, supporting our free national constitution of the United States of America. I love my people and I desire their unity and mine back to their own free national and divine standards because day by day they have been violating the national constitutional laws of their government by clinging to names and principles that are unconstitutional. If the Italians, Greeks, English, Chinese, Japanese, Turks, and Arabians are forced to proclaim their free national name and religion before the constitutional government of the United States of America. It is no more than right that the law should be enforced upon all American citizens alike. In all governments, when a man is born and raised there and asks for his national descent name, and if he fails to give it, he is misused, imprisoned, or exiled. Any group of people that fail to answer up to the constitutional standards of law by name and principles, because to the citizens of any government, you must claim your national descent name. Because they place their trust upon issue and names formed by their forefathers. The word Negro deludes in Latin language to the word nigger. The same as the word colored deludes to anything that is painted, varnished, and dyed. And every nation must bear a national descent name of their forefathers, because honoring thy fathers and thy mothers, your days will be lengthened upon this earth. These names have never been recognized by any American citizen of this day. Through your free national name, you are known and recognized by all nations of the earth that are recognized by said national government in which they live. The 14th and 15th Amendment brought the North and the South into unit, placing the Southerners who were at that time without power with the constitutional body of power. And at that time, 1865, the free national constitutional law was enforced since 1774 declared all men equal and free. And if all men were declared by the free national constitution to be free and equal, since that constitution has never been changed, there is no need for the application of the 14th and 15th amendments for the salvation of our people and citizens. So there isn't but one supreme issue for my people to use to redeem that which was lost. And that is through the above statements. Then the lion and the lamb can lie down together in yonder hills and neither will be harmed because love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice will be reigning in this land. In those days, the United States will be one of the greatest civilized and prosperous governments of the world. 
but if the above principles are not carried out by the citizens and my people in this government, the worst is yet to come because the great God of the universe is not pleased with the works that are being performed in North America by my people and this great sin must be removed from the land to save it from enormous earthquakes, diseases, ETC. And I, the prophet, do herein believe that this administration of the government being more wisely prepared by more genius citizens that believe in their free national constitution and laws and through the help of such classes of citizens, I, the prophet, truly believe my people will find the true and divine way of their forefathers and learn to stop serving cardinal customs and merely ideas of men that have never done them any good but have always harmed them so i the prophet am hereby calling aloud with a divine plea to all true american citizens to help me to remove this great sin which has been committed and is being practiced by my people in the united states of america because they know it is not the true divine way and without understanding they have fallen from the light into utter darkness of sin. And there is not a nation on earth today that will recognize them socially, religiously, politically, or economically, ETC. In their present condition of their endeavorment in which they themselves tried to force upon a civilized world, they will not refrain from their sinful ways of action and their deeds have brought Jim Crowism, segregation, and everything that brings harm to human beings on earth. And they fought the Southerners for all these great misuses, but I have traveled in the South and have examined the conditions there. And it is the works of my people continuously practicing the things which bring dishonor, disgrace, and disrespect to any nation that lives the life. And I am hereby calling on all true American citizens for their moral support and finance to help me in my great missionary work to bring my people out of the darkness into the marvelous light from the prophet. Islam islam islamism all right islamism and thank you brother all right i want to announce without further ado we're going to go into the closing of the meeting before we close does anybody have anything that they wanted to share okay all meetings are to be open and closed promptly according to the circle seven and love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Please rise for the closing prayer. You do not need to repeat after me. Allah, bind our hearts and minds back to our ancient forefathers, divine creed and principles. We ask this in thy holy name and the seven Elohim. Amen. Islam, Islam, Islamism. 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 All right, Islamism. peace and love, Morris. Peace and love, Morris. Peace and love. Peace and love, Morris.